I can't believe it. It's been months. It's been one thing after another. Things get in the way. We have to wait on stuff. I've, What's going what, on? What? What's going on? What's going on? Six months ago, we started this bow. We finally got the bow core finished up and sized and shaped. We were working on the horn, but it stuff just gets in the way. We had to fix the plumbing. Well, we had to fix the plumbing. We had to get the stuff we needed. We had to figure out how to do it and then correct what we were doing when it went wrong. We had to get rid of that old car. We had to get rid of, uh, yeah. Okay, but, promise, bow video every two weeks until we get it finished. Core, rawhide, horn, we're going to follow it that way, put it all together. Stay tuned. Let's do it. Got it. To see how we got to this stage in the process of bow construction, please see our earlier videos linked in the description below. Here I'm using a Stanley Sureform plane to reduce the bow core to a proper contour. It has already been thinned, but it needs to be shaped to provide a balanced and straight core upon which the horn and sinew will be attached. I'm working each side of each limb down to a pre-established line, double checking regularly to be sure that I am getting straightness through the center line. Uh, the work proceeds pretty slowly because of a uh, less than secure and stable workbench. Uh, you get what you pay for.
As you get closer and closer to the contour lines, the work gets a little tedious, but double checking constantly is going to help ensure that the end result is even and symmetrical. Waste not, want not is the principle that I follow. Every time that Stanley Sureform tool gets loaded up, I'm going to save the shavings to go in our camping fire starting kit. Special attention is paid to the limb tips. That's the area that will be bent into a recurve and will also be the section where the rigid seas are attached once the horn and sinew has been applied to the bow. Those tip sections are checked for width to be sure that they will accommodate the narrow rigid seas. I'm using a round Stanley rasp to reduce the grip area to about eight tenths of an inch, about 20 millimeters. That provides a proper arrow pass or clearance for the arrow to lie on the grip area and in its action provides straight flight.
Now I am using a shoemaker's rasp for the final shaping of the grip area. Shoemaker's rasp has both fine and coarse teeth and a flat and curved surface. It's a very useful tool. Back to the stove top to boil the bow limb tips in preparation for shaping them into their recurve configuration. This homemade bending jig is designed to establish that recurve form on the limb tips. Got to get it in there relatively quickly while the limb tip is still hot and can be bent into proper shape. Gradual and even pressure will help establish the bend without damaging the wood. The bow wraps are cinched tight and then the bow limb is left to cool and take a set. Let's unwrap the bow limb and see what happened as far as establishing the recurve tip is concerned. Both limbs now have the recurve tips formed and the bow core is essentially finished and ready for assembly in the completed bow. One additional step after final forming of the core is to apply a thinned wood glue as a sizing that penetrates into the wood and will provide an effective base when glue up time comes with the horn and with the sinew.
While this illustration only shows an application of the sizing to a portion of the bow, naturally all the surfaces should be covered with the sizing so that you have a uniform mating surface when the glue up is performed. Thanks for watching this Oxcart Farm video adventure. Next time around, we're going to show how this Oryx horn is transformed into reinforcement for our composite bow belly. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you've got constructive comments or questions, please add those below. Thanks again. See you soon.